All right, so last time we discussed a little bit about the bones, but we didn't go too far. Actually, we did go far, but not as far to go. So we're going to just um, get back to it um, and get right to um, the long bones and short bones. We talked a little bit about them and exactly where you locate each of the short bones, the flat bones, the regular bones, um, long bones as well. Um, so quickly, let's go over the bone structure itself. All right, so at the very top here, um, you see the um, almost look like Pretty much when you think of a, a bone or even a doggy bone, it's pretty much what kind of image that comes to your head. All right, at the very top and bottom of a long bone, all right, we have the epiphysis, and in the middle we have the uh, the diaphysis. All right, the diaphysis is the, is the shaft, though, if you want to call it. Right. Um, now, if you look at it, all right, you can see that there is a hollow middle here compared to the spongy bone uh, look of the uh, Epiphysis. All right. So the shape is a little bit different. Uh, we have the medullary cavity. Now, the medullary cavity is where you're going to find a fatty yellow uh, marrow, uh, mostly in adults. Um, and so you're going to find primarily uh, fatty cells here. All right. Um, you will find very few blood vessels here. Oh, excuse me, blood cells. All right. Now, um, now at the end here, you have the Epiphysis, right? So we have the uh, epiphyseal. This is the proximal. Oh, let's not move that image. And this is the distal. And I, I believe we already covered um, proximal and distal already, so you should be fine with those, right? Now, um, if you look right over here, right, what you see there is the epiphyseal line, all right? So for instance, if you are dealing with a child, all right, so this line here is not here yet. This that means that cells will continue to grow up, right? So the bone essentially will enlarge. Whereas when you look at a an adult, all right, this line here is going to close. So once this line closes, your bones no longer or shouldn't um, grow any taller, all right? It could grow wider, but it should no longer be able to grow taller. That's why if you, let's say by age 21 or so, if you're already 5'8", um, you're not going any longer than 5' unless you, you're getting some sort of implant or something. Alright, um, so let's talk a bit about this uh, spongy bone here. Alright, all right, the spongy bone area, all right, this is rich in um, red bone marrow. Right? Um, so that means you're going to have a huge supply of uh, red blood cells are created here, or blood cells in general. All right? In adults, uh, production of red blood cells occurs in the red bone marrow. All right? So this here is just a rich source for um, red blood cells. Um, the red bone marrow is also responsible for the formation of white blood cells as well. So you, you, you're not just having erythro. Actually, let me, let me let's, let's get an empty item here for you. Okay. E Erythropoiesis. All right. And leuco. All right, so we have the production of red blood cells, and here we have Luke. I remember that's right. So here we have the creation of the white blood cells. All right, as we mentioned before, the periosteum we talked about a little bit. All right, so this is a um, a dense white um, fibrous tissue. All right, essentially it covers the as you can see here covers the compact bone. All right, um. It contains numerous blood cells as well and nerves. So obviously, if you cut through this, you will feel it. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about the inside. All right, as we get in, um, I believe we already covered endosteum, if I'm not mistaken, and we also covered um, parts of the structure already. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little shift from here, um, save a little bit of time, and we are also going to try to cover. Um, some fractures for medical terminology. All right. All right. Actually, before we cover fracture, yeah, let me do some bone markings because this can be very important here. And in fact, uh, I almost put my name in it. Right? Um, some bone markings right? because bone markings can be one of the hardest sections for a lot of students to pick up. Right. So for the bone markings, let's talk about a few of the projections here. Uh, we have trochanter. 
right? right? Trochanter is a very, very large, um, essentially large or irregular shaped process, right? Remember, process is essentially a pointing or a protrusion of some sort, right? So when you talk about trochanter, you're talking about a large, um, irregular shape um, process, something that you find, but it's not femur, but if it was a femur bone, you would see it right over here. Uh, in fact, let's see if I can get you a quick image um, of a femur. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Google, trust it, Google. Femur. And there you go, image right there. Right here. Alright? So this right here. At that articular cartilage right here, that would be a trochanter. Alright, so let's get back. To our bone markings. Okay. Our next bone marking. Right. Yeah, it starts with a T already, so you can just keep it as this. Tubercle. Alright. Alright, tubercle is a small rounded all right, process. So again, another process. Alright, something that you're gonna find at the femur also. Alright, so alright, uh, let's find tuberosity tuberosity right tuberosity is a large rounded process a process all right again you can find tuberosity of the knee and you can find tuberosity of the humerus right? uh let's see a, another bone mark and condyle all right uh condyle is a rounded articulating Articulating knob, right? Rounded articulating knob. Right. Uh, where can you find this? Again, you can find this at the humerus. Right. Um, and of course, um, you can also find it. Let's talk about uh, foramen. All right, a foramen is a rounded opening. Um, probably the most popular. Uh, for amen is that for amen magna and right, the for amen magna which you can find at the opening of the uh, the bottom of the skull this is where the vertebrae and uh, the spinal column goes through uh, specifically the spinal cord goes through right. uh, fissure right. Right, fissure is a narrow uh, narrow slit like opening uh, let's see the best example. Narrow. Hey, how many is that? Uh, ma narrow uh, slit like opening. Uh, let's see. Let's find image of the eye. Okay. Let's get back here. Let's even look at a skull bone, actually. I can show you. Skull bones. And image. Uh, which one is easy to see here? Oh, that's not that great. And it's very slow. Alright, anyway, so if you can see um, this opening, right, where it's pointing to the lacrimal bone, but it's right behind it, you see that uh, slit like opening, right? So that would be a uh, fissure. Right? And then we have. A meatus, alright. Alright. Now that's just an opening. Um or a passage. Alright. And we also have sinus, right? A sinus is a cavity or hollow space. Alright. You guys probably know sinuses on um, mostly in your head that help the um the skull, right? Lessens the weight of the skull. All right, so <clears throat> let's get back to the bones. Um, let's see what time we have. It looks like we maybe getting just a little bit past our time, but um, let's get on to bones. All right, uh, let's start off first with the skull. Now, we already talked about the individual parts of the skull. We talked about the cranium. We talked about the individual parts of the cranial skull. We talked about the parietal, uh, occipital, 
um, I don't believe I mentioned the sutures, the coronal sutures that separate the uh, the parietal from the frontal. Um, but we already mentioned most of the other uh, skulls. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a that's a list of things to come. Right. Okay. You know, I think I'll just see you in the next video for the rest of the um, skull, because right. the skull session can be long so